a chance then to test this, the Nikon D100. This was one of the first DSLRs released by Nikon way back in the early 2000s. Now this little baby has a six point something megapixel CCD film like sensor. Why is that important? I'll tell you why it's important because you can pick them up for less than $50. I am now introducing you to your next camera. Soon as this is finished or stop, pause this video, jump across to eBay, click the little setting, accepts offers or best offer. Have a look for a Nikon D100 and offer the person 50 bucks because you won't be sorry. Check it out. Now, why would I go out with an old DSLR from the early 2000s rather than just take my iPhone? That's a great question. I do have my iPhone um, in my pocket just in case anyone calls me, that's what it's for. The difference is with the DSLR camera, I can do so much more. Now I have a 256 megabyte CF card in this camera right now, which is not a massive amount. I mean, I think it gave me a total of 145 shots not a lot of shots, but with that 145 shots, I can get some wonderful images. Now, as opposed to my iPhone, I can get some beautiful bokeh with this camera and this lens. This pretty cheap lens, 35 to 70 mil Nikkor, very, very readily available. Costs about 20, 20 to 50 bucks. Um, I got this on keh.com. Let's try some macro stuff. Beautiful. And this is not a macro lens. It's a cheap lens in a cheap camera. All in all, I think, with the battery and charge, which I had to buy separate. I think I'm in this camera for about $45. Oh my God, look at these bees. Beautiful. I'm sorry to interrupt the bees whilst they're having their lunch, but I've got to take some pictures. You know, I bore myself my, with my own voice sometimes, all the times. Just a wonderful place to really test a CCD sensor. All these colors. Check out this scenery right here. I mean, yeah, there's no real topography to look at, but with the different colors and the different distances, I can really test the lens and the ability of this D100. Now let's increase that f-stop and see what we come out with. And we'll see how it handles it. I think it's gonna turn out pretty good, but. These images, these colors, these beautiful flowers, you know, they spend a lot of time on this garden, a lot of people with a lot of passion for us to come and enjoy it. So if you're ever in Columbus, the Park of Roses, absolutely beautiful. You know, I kind of think with this Park of Roses, I can pretty much test every single color in the rainbow in flower form and really put this sensor to the test and through its paces. Absolutely beautiful. So let me take you back to 2002. After the release of the D1, wait a sec, I have a D1. Well, this is the D1X. After all, following the release of the D1X, which is an extremely expensive professional DSLR camera, Nikon needed to release something which was more prosumer, less bulky, not as big, easier for people to use, and something less intimidating. And they did so, and they did it really well. Now, one of the problems with the D1X, and will be a problem still, is these gosh darn battery packs. Now, these are still expensive to this day. They hold not much charge, and they're a pain in the A to use. I have two D1Xs, and I have a D2HS as well. I love this camera, it's great, however, the general consensus was that we needed a prosumer camera. So that is where the Nikon D100 came out to play. And is it good in 2003? Hell yes. If that's all you wanted to know, you found one, you want to know if it's good, 
Take it from me, this is a good camera. Yes, go and buy it. Let's stop. Is it the only camera you should use? Now, this should be a camera that you put in your collection because you're looking to enjoy the nostalgia of lower megapixel cameras, all right? This has a 6.1 megapixel CCD film light sensor. And this is why I own this camera because I love the colors that come out of the CCD sensor. If you want something genuinely to shoot every day in 2023, this is a Nikon D60. Now the D60 for me is a great everyday shooter. It's what I shoot with these days. I took it out recently to a brewery that we went to, took it to a party. It's smaller, it has a higher megapixel, it's wonderful and it's still CCD, but you're gonna pay upwards of a hundred bucks for it. The old school retro Nikon D100 gives you different vibes. And that 6.1 megapixel CCD sensor, in my opinion, you guys, this is my opinion. I enjoy those vibes. So this is my Nikon D100 everyday shooter. I've greeked out the Nikon and just made it look a little bit more cool. But this is a prosumer camera. What does that mean? It means it has a few more functions for the person that wants to be a photographer to get to grips with and have a look at. It's so quirky. Look at the wheel at the top. Now this wheel is very reminiscent of the older SLR cameras. If you have a look at the Nikon N80, this is one of my um, autofocus 35 mil SLR cameras. I absolutely love this. I think I did a video on this one. Super cool, 35 mil autofocus Nikon. on camera. Now this looks very much like the D100. Obviously the D100s is heavier, but essentially the buttons and the controls are the same. So if you look at the top, if you want to change the ISO, for example, one would just turn the wheel round to the ISO set and then use my dials on my wheels to change the ISO. And then I would just flip back to my modes. Now, if you look at the modes there, I don't know if we can zoom in. So we have manual, aperture priority, my favorite, shutter priority and program. Now, shutter priority is great. That means you can capture those fast moving subjects. Aperture priority, I can control the aperture, the f-stop, get that beautiful bokeh depending on how good the lens is. Now this lens, this is a 35 mil. It's pretty good. It's a 1.2, not too bad. Um, and I think I picked this lens up for something like $25 on eBay. So this whole setup, the camera, the battery, the CF card, because you guys, this takes CF cards. And let me tell you, there is an issue with these CF cards. The maximum size of the CF card on this, I would recommend is four gig. And that's just in my experience. This 256 is absolutely fine. I know it sounds crazy, but I use this. I think I get something like, let me see. I've got 44 shots left on this card and I haven't taken that many, but it doesn't matter. Think about it. N80, I get 36 shots and then I have to change it and develop it. 44 shots, I'm already getting more and I can view them on this LCD screen to check out my composition and to check out if I've got the white balance, ISO correct, etc. That screen's a 1.8 inch and it doesn't sound like a lot, I know. But let me tell you, it shows you everything you need to see. When I'm talking about everything you need to see, if you're taking pictures, it's just gonna show you your composition and if you're in focus, etc. When you look through the viewfinder, it gives you a really good perspective of what you're looking at. And it's exactly like my film camera. So if I go from shooting film and I run out of money, even if Kentmere 400 is $7 a roll, I can just step across to my B100 and use, let's say we look at a four gig memory card. Let's go there, four gig. Let's talk numbers whilst I'm drinking a yingling. Just in my experience, four gig 
comes in at about $10 for a four gig CF card. Four gig comes in, in my experience, this is just from me, you might find different or specs that are different. I find I get about 300 raw files. But you guys, raw files with this camera, that CCD sensor, it gives you so much room to mess around with that picture. It is so cool in Lightroom. Again, in my experience, um, and it gives you about a thousand like JPEGs, and that's in um, like basic, uh, uh, sorry, fine mode, about a thousand shots, which is epic. You don't need to shoot raw with these CCD sensors, in my opinion, because the colors that come out are dope from the sensor. Remember, it's not CMOS. These are film-like sensors. So yes, this camera is so slow to save the information from the composition to the card. Who cares? Not me. Because the information it saves is so cool and so nostalgic. And it's 6.1 megapixel, which means when I edit that photograph, that raw file in my slow <laughs> MacBook Air, it doesn't take all day like my V800. Focus in that. You have some pretty fast focusing in this. It's a five point, pretty intuitive focusing system, which I actually really love. And with this old school lens, it makes a hell of a noise when it's focusing. And then again, that nostalgic kind of vibe kicks in and I love it. Shutter speed, all the way into one over 4,000. 4,000, that's very quick. So you should be able to capture those beautiful sports moments at about three frames a second of whatever it does. We all love shooting film. I just put a roll of Portra 400 through my um, Nikon film camera. Absolutely loved it. This camera feels wonderful in the hand. It's metal, it's bulky, it's solid. But then when I wanna go out and shoot digital, I'm just gonna grab one of my old school retro DSLRs. Now, for me, the 100, it is just my favorite. It has this huge handle on the right, this huge grip for my big hand. And then this tiny little screen that doesn't distract me. I love the sound of the shutter. I did a great photo walk the other day with this D100. Have a look at these images and I had a great time and it was wonderful and intuitive to use. Check it out. You know, one of the things I find most difficult about doing a camera walk is reducing the amount of pictures I take and really culling them down. Now I just, I love coming out and taking pictures so I have so many on my camera and I can only show you a few, obviously. So I try to pick the best ones, but so far in this park of roses, oh my goodness, what a nice camera walk it is. Beautiful. Check out this red, I'm excited. I mean, it's past its sell by date, but still beautiful. Absolutely beautiful out here. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And then this, the final shot, we get to climb the free tower. It's about 15 foot off the ground and you get to see the whole park of roses. Now the flowers aren't fully in bloom right now. You need to wait a couple of weeks to see them all, but I've got the opportunity to climb these steps and take a wonderful picture at the top. Awesome, beautiful day. What a place to get married, huh? Park of roses, Saturday, nice cool breeze, sun shining. Now look at that view, wonderful. Free to come in, free to have a look, free to enjoy yourself. Set that f-stop nice and high, directly from the CCD sensor. I'm feeling good about it as is. Let's go home, let's check it out. So that was my quick dirty review of the Nikon D100 and should you buy it in 2023? Absolutely yes, you should. Now this memory card only has around 20 shots left in it. That's how much I've been shooting this camera, okay? Don't let that eBay clock run down. Boom, make your bid, 50 bucks, it's yours. If you already have Nikon cameras, if you already have Nikon DSLRs, then you can fit these lenses onto those other cameras. Thanks for stopping by you guys. Thanks for checking out the D100. That is a great camera for less than 50 bucks. You can still pick up the batteries, the EN EL3, Castar or Wasabi, wherever you get your batteries, you can pick these up. It's the same battery in the D200 and the D70, I believe, and the D80 and the D90. So it's a super versatile battery. You get a bunch of shots per. I think for 15 bucks, I've got two batteries and a wall charger. So that's great. Go out and buy the camera, take a few shots. You won't regret it. It's 50 bucks. 
you're not throwing it away. It's gonna be worth it in the future. And this camera is so robust, you guys, you're gonna love it. Thanks for stopping by. I think I'm gonna be reviewing the Nikon D300. I just re-bought it. I love that camera. It's one of my favorites. You're gonna find out why. Come and check that one out. But thanks for stopping by. See you on the next one. Thanks guys. Thank you.